Hi, and welcome to the Eco Heidi Show. I'm Heidi Borchers. Today, our show is Green Bling, all about recycling into bling that you can wear. I first have some bracelets made out of brown bag, and it's the handles that I'm using this time. A fun project, easy to do, anybody can make it. Candace Jedowitz is joining me today with a blue plastic bottle, and she's making really cool earrings. I also have a green bling bracelet with buttons. Love these buttons. And they look like they're kind of floating, but they're just attached to the water bottle. And my last project is a pendant made out of the bottom of a plastic bottle. So don't go away, I'll be right back. All the, bag, the brown bags that come out nowadays have these cool little handles. They're really not good for holding the bag, but they're really good for making bracelets. Take a look. For my bracelets today, I'm using the Aline's Original Tacky Glue in the gold bottle. It's an all-purpose glue. But on my bracelets, I like it too because it's, it makes it flexible and yet they're very sturdy when you wear them. We're also using a brown bag, the, the um, handles off the brown bag, so you just tear them off. You need two handles for each bracelet. Now if you get some extra of the brown bag, just trim it off, pull it off. And you need to smooth them out. Now I tried ironing them and I that worked too, but I like this better if you just take a pair of scissors and just like your curling ribbon, just go over that fold. It's mainly the two folds in the middle that you want to smooth out. Now there's going to be a right side and a wrong side. This is going to be your inside or wrong side and the smooth is going to be your outside. We need to put two of them together to make them strong. And I cut off the end. You can see where there's a fold there. Let's get the second one. Again, cut off that end. And then put a little bit of glue. Just maybe about three, four inches. Make sure that it's even and it's to the edges. You don't need a lot of excess. This is what's going to hold it together. I'm going to put my second one into the glue. And the reason that I'm overlapping like this, I found the, I wanted a continual uh, bracelet. I didn't want it to be, I tried it first where it overlapped, you know, where I just kind of went like this and I overlapped too. And I found that I had, on each bracelet I had a lump. So this way, then it makes it where it's smooth all the way around. Now also find a, a jar that's the same size of what your wrist is. And remember, you have to al allow for going over your hand. This one is almost nine inches, and it works pretty good. It's a tiny bit bigger than I'd like, but um, so go f look at, see, measure what it would be from over your hand, and that's the size of your, your bracelet. Okay, I want to put this other one here. And 
again I'm going to put some more glue right here and it's an even amount get to the edges and not have any excess on the edge Now this piece is going into, this little edge here is going into right into this area right here that I have glue. So I want to put a tiny bit of glue on that edge. And I see that this is a tiny bit too big because it, it's not going tight around the, the jar. I want to make sure that it adjusts to this a little bit too much. You want it to fit around the size of your, your wrist and that's what you've measured the jar for. And again here and now I put some A rubber band and hold it and let it dry. That way it's going to be the shape that you need and it's going to dry where it's flexible but yet it's strong. So the next thing that I do is I take some of the brown bag, just a strip of the brown bag, and I put glue all over it and I put it onto the, the bracelet and then I trim it and then I push in the sides and completely cover it. And that gives me just a completely even surface. See, here's one that doesn't have it, and this one has it. So you can see you want to cover up this seam, and doing it with a, a continuous strip works really nice. Then I'm going to base coat it. And I base coated this one just pink. You can base coat any color. And I have all these really cool nettings, and I, they always give a wonderful pattern. This one is from food. I think both of these are from like oranges or um, onions and uh, probably garlic. And then I also have these really cool ones that I pull off the bottom of tile that I, that I use when I'm, um, when I'm getting my tile. You always have to take them off. I like this one because it's really sturdy. So I'm going to put it over my uh, dry bracelet. That's where I put my base coat. Now don't use the, the um, I'm using a cosmetic sponge, but don't use it directly from the paint. T dab a little bit off and then go on. You want kind of a dry, dry uh, sponge first because you can always go back and put more on. And if you have too much, it seems to slide right under that, that pattern. And just go all the way around. And again, if you need to refill your sponge, tap it down. And you can see, I'm going to take this off. My pattern is right there. Again, if you don't, you know, don't take it off till you completely have it the way you want because it's kind of hard to line it up afterwards. So let me show you the two that I have done. This one here, I put some gold in with it before it gold and black and then this one and there's there's places that uh, that it got a little bit too much but I really like the look of it now when you're completely done and your paint is dry you're going to want to spray it with the Aline's clear gloss spray and I did it a couple times on each one isn't that fun love it Now you know why sometimes I forget my reusable bag and I grab a brown bag. I love using all parts of the bag, but these handles are perfect. Aren't they cool? I love these. Think of all the different colors that you can make them out of. Candace Jedowitz found a blue plastic bottle. I think it is so cool. And she's making earrings. Hi, Candace. Thank you, Heidi. Welcome back to my studio, everyone. Ever since Heidi Borchers got me interested in saving recyclables to make jewelry from, 
I've been keeping my eyes out for different things and interesting things. My daughter brought this bottle of water in one day and I fell in love with the color. I love that it's a rich blue and it's also a little bit thicker than a regular water bottle. So what I found out when I was experimenting is very interesting. Sit back, hold on to your seats, because here we go! For this project, I started out with this lovely blue water bottle. I cut into it with a craft knife, and then I cut out this whole center strip to work with. And from that, I cut two circles, one inch. This is a really heavy duty cutter, and it works really nicely. And then I cut two squares. Here's what I'm going to do with the squares. I'm going to cut and they don't have to be exactly square. I'm going to cut three dangles from each square. Like that. Now, since this one doesn't have a square at the top, I'm going to cut one. And I'm also going to cut this a little bit smaller, like that. And the same on this one. Next we're going to punch holes. I used a 16th inch hole. You can use whatever size you want. I found this to be the best. Ooh, let's do the circles first. I'm making the two high edges, the top and the bottom. So you'll cut one hole at the top. one hole directly across from that at the bottom. Stay kind of close to the edge like that. Then turn it to the side. Make sure that it's in there. Yes it is. And you can mark these if you want to. I'm just eyeing them. There's my three little holes. And then you'll want to cut each of these a hole at the top. I'm going to ink up a corner of the stamp with the pigment ink. And I'm going to push the concave side down onto the stamp. Keep the sets together. Be careful not to touch the stamp because at this point it will rub off. So you're going to grab a needle tool or whatever you want to use. We'll move these a little further back. Put it in one of the holes. Hold your heat tool about five inches off the surface. Now take your heat proof tool and put a little pressure on it this way and hit it close for a minute. Now they will warp a little bit, but that's okay. That's part of the charm. And what's interesting is as the heat tool fixes the, the uh, ink, it comes up very bright. I like the way that looks. Let me show you one of the smaller pieces. The smaller pieces go much faster, but you'll want to do the same thing. Just take a little bit of the curve out of it. Just like that. So go ahead and shrink the rest of yours. It almost works like shrink plastic, but you don't quite take it that far. 
So now you have a pair of earrings. They don't look exactly alike. They kind of come out like potato chips. No two are exactly the same. But they're close enough and they look really beautiful with their copper on them. Now I'm going to show you something that I learned at Maryland College Institute of Arts. I didn't actually go there. I took an introduction to the introduction to the jewelry course. But this stayed with me and I love it. You can make a whole bunch of jump rings the same size all at once just by wrapping a wire around something and then let's see I want to make sure that I'm cutting on on the curve I'm cutting on the curve and I'm just going to put the back of my the flat back of the cutter up to the first loose end and cut through the next loop and for every cut I get a jump ring So cut your six jump rings at least. You don't have to limit yourself to that. Okay, now when handling jump rings, you want to use two pair of pliers because you want to be able to move this way and this way that will keep your round. You'll be out of round if you try to open it up that way. So let's grab our first piece. Slide it into place. And close it up. I'm going to open it up. Pick up my second piece. Just like that. Now you just have to assemble your pieces and then we'll make the earpiece. To make the actual ear wire, You'll want two and a half inches of the 20 gauge wire. Make a loop, grab the loop at the bottom where you ended up and give the wire a little bend to make it straight. This is the same as a jump ring you can bend it side to side, but don't bend it open and closed, like this. Don't do it that way. And then close up the loop. Slide on a little coil bead, like so. Grab hold of your loop like that. Give the wire a sharp bend above the coil. And then bend the wire down over the handle of the pliers. And there's your ear wire. Mm-hmm. You want to try some now, don't you? I hope that you do. And I hope that if you make some, you'll send me photographs so I can share them on our website. Email me, photos and stories, Candice at CoolToCraft.com. Thank you for having me on your show today, Heidi. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Stay crafty, my friends. Back to you, Heidi.
Thanks, Candace. That is so cool. I love the blue bottle. I've seen the green bottles, but I haven't seen the blue one. So I'm going to have to take a look for those. My next project is making a bracelet with a water bottle and buttons. I love buttons. Most of you know that. I love all the different ones. These are the Bloomingthal Lansing. Let's take a look. For today's project, I'm using a plastic water bottle. My favorite one is the Smart Water Bottles, but there also is, um, because it's all flat, also Aquafina has a nice flat area on um, their bottles. What you're going to do is you're going to use some uh, masking tape and just tape off your different um, sizes that you want of your, your bracelets. And then you're going to take a craft knife and you're going to cut it apart. And that's what I've done here. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to trim the excess so right down to the line of the masking tape. The masking tape makes a perfect size. Make sure you get it straight on the bottle for your bracelet. And remember, it's the size of the masking tape that's going to determine the size or the width of your, your bracelet. So you want to make sure that uh, probably not quite as wide as an inch. Uh, I think this one is 5 eighths inch that I have here for this particular bracelet that we're using with buttons. Okay, we're going to... Now on this one, because I want the, to see the clearness of the bracelet, I take off the masking tape. On other ones that I've covered it with fabric, I just usually leave the masking tape right on. And if you do have some of the label on here, which I seem to have a little sticky part there, just use a label remover to remove that stickiness. Let me show you the buttons. All kinds of really cool buttons. Look at the flower and leaf buttons and there's some sparkle buttons. And these are all from Bloomingthal Lansing. They have a wonderful line of buttons. Look at the alphabet buttons. Here's some plain white ones, but they have some really neat textures. And then there's some wonderful ones that look like they're marble. And look at these over here that are uh, retro, smaller ones that are marble. And look at the fun uh, cupcakes and um, sweets. And then there's some wonderful kind of mod flower ones. Today I'm going to show you using these flower ones because I really like these. So we have our bracelet. The next thing we need is a paper punch and I'm using an eighth inch paper punch to create my hole. I'm going to just create a hole there. I have some embroidery floss. Each one is tied on with embroidery floss. I'm using the Aline's uh, original tacky glue in the gold bottle just to put a little bit of glue on the end of my um, embroidery floss. It helps to get it through the hole. So I just take my finger, dab it into the glue put some glue on the edge and it just takes just a few seconds for it to dry. Now choose your buttons and if you want to stack buttons on top of buttons then this is what you want to do. Now for each button that you're going to put on or each little collection of buttons you're going to want a small button to go behind it and that's what helps to hold it onto the bracelet. You can use these itty bitty little buttons or you can use the smaller buttons. So I'm going to put that one on first. I'm going to put my little itty bitty button on first. And so I come up through the hole. Get my glue off my hands. And just come up through the hole. and then go back down through the hole. These are little tiny holes. I like these smaller ones because you can't really see them on the inside because these are all going to the inside. Come up through the hole that we punched. And then th 
thread on your button collection that you're going to put on. One will go through one hole, and the other will go through the other hole. And I want to put like a center for this flower. Whoop. And this one's got really tiny little holes. And it, what you do on that case is just roll the embroidery floss and a little bit tighter and it'll go through the hole then. There it is. Okay, then we're going to tie it off, and you're going to tie it one time, and then knot it, and then just clip off. You just have a little thread coming up. So you have your collection, and then you have this little button on the inside that's holding it on. Now you can start on the next one. So I want to take, let's say I want to put a leaf on here. I want to find out where it's going to go. I like it to kind of come underneath that flower button. So I know that that one's going to be right about there. So I'm going to put my hole there. And let's cut some more thread here. Again, putting your glue on the end works perfect to get it through the holes. Take a little bitty button here, go through, and then come up through this hole. And I'm not going to put any any um, topper on this one. I like this leaf one, so I'm just going to come up through each hole. And sometimes you have to adjust it a little bit. I want to make sure I tie it exactly where I want, so you have to pull them around a little bit. Tug on a little bit on your embroidered floss, make sure it's tight, and then again tie it in a knot. Oops. And cut it. So again, you have your one on the inside and then you just continue to go around and again putting underneath and each one you punch. Now let me show you the two that I have here. Here's the fun one with the, the cupcakes. You can see how I've got the cupcakes, some are going upside down and all of my buttons are on the inside. When you put it on you don't even see those buttons. Isn't that fun? And also I have this flower one. And I really stacked these up here. There's like four or five because this is a wonderful collection of flowers and they also have some really cool little felt um, flowers here too. Again, you won't see the inside of the, um, the bracelet. Lots of fun and uh, love all these uh, wonderful Bloomingthal Lansing buttons. You know, a lot of times people ask me, where do you get your ideas? And this next project, I in the mail I got a catalog from Chico's, and on the front cover there was this pendant, and I thought, oh, well that would work for the bottom of the plastic bottles, because I'm using so many of the sides of the bottles for the bracelets, 
But this one was a pendant and I thought that would really be cool. So that's what I did on the next project. This, this particular catalog is what inspired me to do the next project. To make this pendant, you're going to use the bottom of a plastic bottle. And a lot of the drink bottles have really cool uh, patterns on them. There's some that have even like flowers, some that are plain where you can create your own de design. Here's another flower. So you can see that every single plastic bottle has a fun, different look that you can create this pendant, whether it's a large bottle or a small bottle. And to remove the bottom from the bottle, all you're going to do is just take a craft knife and just cut it off. And some of them are a little stronger than others. Just be careful when you're cutting. And then with scissors, you can just simply trim off what you want to have as your pendant. I have one ready that is from a smaller bottle. And I found that it... First of all, my first one that I did, um, I actually did, I painted it with acrylic paint. And then I was playing around and I was found that this paint pen worked perfect too. So play around with the different colors. On a paint pen, you need to test it first. And then just start to color in. And you're coloring on the back side. And if you turn it over, you can see you have a little bit more filling in there to do. We're going to put a center in, even though we might put something over it. I'm just doing this real quick. This one's a little bit deeper, but it's fun to, to fill it in and make it look like a flower. You can see now how I need to fill in. Okay, now if you want to do to to do any other little designs, maybe you want to put some dots. You can do that. Now I did that really, really quick just to show you, but there's, you can see the pattern on it. Now what you want to do is you want to take the black acrylic paint so just a little bit of the paint and I'm using a cosmetic sponge and just start dabbing it all over the inside. Remember this is going to be the front, and this is the inside of the back. And it does take a couple coats of this black paint in here, because you'll, you'll be able to see through in little places a little bit more.
and there you can see where it's starting to to take shape like I said you can see see through a little bit just let this dry completely and then uh, put one more coat on the back okay I have this piece already done and I want to put on this little piece that's from the uh, plastic bottle I've paper punched this two places and I paper punched the top here. We're going to line it up. Take an eyelet, put the eyelet in. It has to be lined up. There. Put your pad underneath, put it down onto the pad, and then the eyelet setter goes right over the eyelet and you push. And there you have the attached eyelet. This, this is where your beads are going to go. And then what I did was I just took a Sharpie and um, covered that with a black ink. Let's take a look at my finished piece. And you can see how this is the white paint on the back. Here's my marble. Here's where I set the piece to hold the beads or anything else that you wanted to put together. I think it's really cool that I found another use for the bottom of the plastic bottles. But not only that, another cool thing is the necklace that's in the catalog is really heavy because it has lots of, of heavy uh, glass beads and then the pendant's really heavy. The plastic bottle is not heavy at all. I'm really short so a, a pendant like that tends to just overwhelm me and be heavy. But when you use the plastic bottle it's really lightweight. So that's really, really, really cool. For instructions for all of today's projects on the Eco Heidi Show, go to cooltocraft.com. All the instructions are there and pictures and step-by-step -step photos on how to make them. Also be sure you sign up for our newsletter. It comes out twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Lots of information, lots of fun. And while you're there, there's almost dailies that show all the fun things that my sister Tiffany and I do during the week. All the bloopers, all the mistakes, all the fun things. Um, some extra projects are on there, some extra patterns, so don't forget to go sign up for the Almost Dailies. That's the only place you, you can find them. And don't forget, go to Facebook and join us. If you haven't already liked us, be sure to like us because we do all kinds of information on Facebook. I have lots of other Green Bling ideas in my Green Bling book. If you'd like to buy a copy of the Green Bling book, be sure you go to shopcooltocraft.com. So thanks for joining me for today's show, and don't forget to creative recycle. Bye-bye. See you next time.